Doctor CEO, look at you. Yeah, yeah, new merch life. Yeah. I, I can't even deal. Yeah. Well, hey everybody, it's been a while. I had no voice and uh, all sorts of things, so we're back. And I was traveling, so that was that was important. But welcome back to the Ass Arena live after show. This is episode eleven. We're still rolling along. I'm your host, Janine Truitt. I'm the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC based here in New York. And I focus on workforce planning, digital uh, transformation projects, tech advisory, just to name a few things. If you ever want to know more about what I do at scale, you can find me at www.talentthinkinnovations.com. And I will pass it to my co-host, Pablo. Hey, how's it going? Dr. McNeil with MB Usable Security. I deal with most things data. We look at um, using data to uh, keep you secure as well as to help you increase revenue. You can find out more about uh, what I'm working on at www.mbusecurity.com. And uh, I'm glad to be here. Wow. Welcome, welcome. So what's going on, Pablo? What's What's new? What do you got to tell me about plant-based diets? I know you said you grew up as one. I didn't even know that you grew up like that. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know. It doesn't come up often, I guess. So I, both of my parents became vegetarian before they even met each other. So I was actually born like 100% um, <laughs> into like a plant-based environment. So... Hmm. Yep. And so, like, did you ever feel like you were missing, like, anything? Like, did you, like, Never. go to your friends' houses and they were, like, having, like, the big juicy burger and you were like, wow, I wish. My cousins. I mean, so my mom uh, and kind of my dad, but my mom definitely in New York, uh, when I was younger, they, my mom was like the only real vegetarian in her family, everybody eating chicken and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, okay, everyone's getting, and they'd be like, no, that's not for you, Paul. This is your plate. And then mine didn't look the same. It didn't smell the same. It was just different, you know? So like you see the big bowl with the lemons and the fish, and then like like not for you and you see it's like man this looks amazing so wow so so you were truly plant-based like no not even fish yeah no not fish uh lacto ovo vegetarian so we did eggs um cheese and some milk um but i think when i was about five or six we tried some of my dad's soy milk and thought that that was better than actual milk. And then uh, my mom just was like, well, you guys aren't drinking real milk anymore. So I guess that's that. But it just came because I like sugar and soy milk was sweeter than uh, regular milk. Yeah, totally. I, I learned how to read the little ingredients thing at that time. And so being the smart kid that I was, I was like, my parents won't let me get Captain Crunch and stuff. All of our cereals only have like four sugars in it. But this milk, it balances out. And, and, then, and then they started blaspheming the soy milk because I, I never liked whole milk. Like they used to tell you you had to have it because it strengthened your bones and whatever, whatever. And I was like, yeah, but it tastes like trash. Put chocolate in it. And that was the only way that I would drink it. And then... I was a strawberry. Oh, you're like my dad. Oh, the next quick strawberry with the tin that you had to use the back of the spoon. Oh, up. Very on. West Indian. That's let's go. Let's go. <laughs> a little no. bit of um, Milo. What you know about that life? But, wow. Uh, you know, I be wanting to pull your your Trini card every once and again, but you really are Trini, though. You really yeah. are, because who oh, else yeah. knows about Milo? Come on, come out here. <laughs> It tastes better when you had the soccer players on front. I don't know. Just I don't it. know what's on it. I don't know what's in it now. Like I, I, I like we I can only get it at our little like um, Latin markets now because you know I'm not really living in any ethnic parts anymore. And I start I turned it around to like look at the ingredients and I was like, mm, y'all doing <laughs> something different. This ain't the I Milo I remember. 
I haven't had it in years and years, but um, but yeah, no. So so yeah, lacto oo from the womb. Uh, like for me, I couldn't wait to go to college so I could eat like chicken. Like that was like I didn't even care about drinking. <laughs> I didn't care about smoking, and like I made it very known at like fifteen, sixteen, like because my mom, again, like my parents grew up eating meat. And my mom, you, you know, I knew she knew how to cook it. She was like, I'm not making you that. She said, you have to leave my house in order to have it. And I was like, the first thing I'm going to do when I go to college is get some chicken. Wow. You know it's real when your first inclination isn't about the booze going to college. Nope. It's me. No. You're really no, different. I thought about it. Yeah, very different. I was like, I'm about to eat this chicken. I'm about to try these burgers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god why why do i feel like i see you like fat bastard like your first year in college just like get in my belly kind listen, of listen was it, it was, all that you had imagined and dreamed of or was it just like eh? okay <laughs> my first time getting me um i was uh i was dating this girl at the time and we had gone to Walmart and we went to the deli and she got like some fried chicken or something. And at this point, I'm like, I've heard like, I'm going to get sick because I've never had meat before and all these other things. And I was like, don't care. I'm about to <laughs> risk it all out here. for the. <laughs> she gave me like, I don't even want like the smallest piece that you could possibly have of chicken mm -hmm. that you could call it chicken is what I got from her. But like she tore off a piece and I ate it. And it was so bland and uh, so garbage. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is it. This is this is what you people are hype. This is your king. Like <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward oh. two weeks later, she had a friend from the Bahamas. Her friend from the Bahamas had a hot plate in the room. And was like, the cafeteria food is garbage. I'm about to, you know, hook some stuff up. So she had this little container. She brought out some of my girl with the, at the time uh, with some chicken in it. Mm -hmm. She had done some curry chicken. She gave, my girl gave me a piece of that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is amazing. And then I started chasing the chicken high after that. I was like, I have to keep fighting this other places. So I would keep eating chicken at all these other places, trying to get the similar high. Like, it fell off the bone. It was just like best ever that I had had at that point, which I guess was the first real. Hilarious. But yeah, was. So where then, are we at now? Are you like a full on just I eat whatever? Or are you still kind of plant-based at heart? Um, I'm a heavy flexitarian. Uh, I only really, I mean, I can cook fish now. I like, I learned how to cook fish. I, you know, start messing around with it here and there. So I can like bake some fish, fry some fish. But for the most part, I'm still very plant-based. So this is a interesting thing for me. Plant-based things are my comfort food. So the way that someone would like pig out mm. on chicken and stuff like that. I'll be like, oh, let me pull up on these like soy meat alternative patties. Like that's like my comfort thing because that's what I grew up with. Okay. So um, I know how to cook vegetarian and plant-based foods more and I'm more comfortable in that space, tofu, all that kind of stuff than I am actually cooking like chicken or something like that. Yeah. I will hop on the grill every time and again, but uh that was just because I have friends who grilled a lot in grad school, and I just something about grilling was really cool. And you're cost. in Tennessee, so you know. Yeah, yeah. That's I did cool. grow up in Texas, but but like I said, I was around it, but I didn't actually like. We would put like soy patties on the grill. Like I would go to the barbecue and then have like my little patty on the corner onto wow. foil you like it was it. like i didn't i never like i legitimately until i went to college i did not eat anything meat or fish interesting wow yeah. so like i'm curious like did your mom cook like west indian food did she like modify it kind of into yeah. vegetarian okay yeah. 
you know, so, you know, lots of um, recipes and like everything just with soy, soy based like substitutes in there. Yeah. Uh, tofu sometimes. She, we weren't really big on tofu growing up. It would usually be one of the like prepackaged things or veggies or something like that. Yeah. You know, it always perplexes me with the vegan thing is I find, I feel like some people are really like passionate about it. Like for me, it's more so like a lifestyle choice that I've gradually right. come to, but I wouldn't say like, I'm like about to get out there with like, you know, a picket in March on veganism. Right. But you have these people that are like huge on it. And then like, I, I watch these vegan pages on like IG and it's like, they're trying to recreate. It seems to me that they try to recreate things that would typically be for a meat eater. This, mm. this is very perplexing to me because to me, it's like, if the whole thing is that meat is bad and veggies are good, then I, I would see no reason why you'd be trying to, you know, replicate burgers and vegan cheese and these kinds of things because you've already said it's bad. But they do this. I see these pages and it's like, look at my my blue cheese burger with vegan blah, 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 and blah, 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 aioli. And I'm just like, but you're vegan though. So like, I always wonder if there's some part of that person, because mo many of them were meat eaters before, that inherently feels drawn to the meat, but their, their conviction though. So I'm just going to try to create this. Like, there's just something very, I don't know. It's like weird. It's like, if you, if you don't eat it, you don't eat it. Like to me, why would you try to recreate it? Maybe you could dispel the. I don't know. I mean, so, okay. So growing up, I, oh, I, I just don't like people. I don't like being misled. So like, if I go to your house and you go, oh, I've made, here are some chocolate brownies, but it was made out of carob, I'm going to be mad at you because carob, while it's cool and is a chocolate alternative, right, and I can appreciate, grew up eating it, mm -hmm. is not chocolate. So when you tell me this is chocolate and I eat it and I go, this is carob, while I like carob, I'm mad because I expected chocolate. So for me growing up, that was always kind of my thought process. And this is before I ever had meat. And it was just kind of like, no, this is definitely not an actual burger. Whereas I had friends who were very vegetarian, vegan. Oh, this is a burger. Here you go. And they would give meat eaters and deceive them all the time. When I started to eat meat, I was then like, oh, this stuff doesn't taste anything like real meat. Why would, are so many people lying when they know better? And for some of the products, like I know some of the stuff you can find in the breakfast food section at the store. Mm -hmm. The idea initially, if you look at like, uh, what's one of the companies, Morningstar, mm -hmm. like when they first came out, their initial goal was to be more of like a nicotine patch to like a raw vegan diet. It wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to be the stopping point. It was supposed to be like one of the steps and then you were supposed to be like, okay, I'm not eating meat, so I'm going to get these almost burger things, and then I'm going to get off of the almost burger things, and I'm going to get down to the, like, raw vegan diet. It's supposed to be the stepping point. And somewhere along the lines, it became that that's it. So when you look at a lot of these, like, different um alternate meat alternatives they are super high in sodium they're extremely unhealthy because and and they were not really initially supposed to be a thing where you it wasn't supposed to be a stopping point and so they're not super healthy and they should also be used in moderation but you know yeah like i'm okay so this beyond meat thing is mm -hmm. bothersome to me I mean, I have to try it. I, I got to try. It. Sorry, it's on my list to have to say that this is a burger and it's completely 100 percent plant based, but it bleeds. Uh -huh. What is that? Like, what, like, what is that? That's not normal. And I mean, there's like some conspiracies out there since this is a conspiracy loving show. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's get it. Let's get it. Conspiracy J. That suggests that, you know, they're using um, 
discarded humans or such or animals or something like that <laughs> to make yeah. these things. I don't know. I'm just the messenger, but I just know, I don't know of any plants that bleed. I understand the intention is to give the person the illusion that they're having a real burger so that, but that's, again, this is one of those things along the lines of what I'm saying. Like, if your whole intention is to get away from that, why are we replicating things that are exactly I, like where you came from? I don't get this. I, 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 I think it's, I think it's, again, um, there's a lot of times they're focused on drawing in new people. So you go, um, and, and you know, there's that, uh, man, I was watching a TED talk on it. Um, most accessible or it, it's, is it like Maya rule or something like that? Basically you try to introduce something new by making it extremely accessible. So it's like most advanced but most accessible or something like that. Uh, I can't remember it. If I remember it, I'll uh, share yeah. it next week or I find it. But it, there was a TED talk on it. And it's basically this design principle that if you're gonna introduce some new technology or some brand new concept, it needs to be slightly relatable to something that everyone is kind of um, familiar with already so that they'll be most accepting of it. And so I think the idea was we're gonna get more meat eaters if we can show them some things that they are slightly accustomed to as the first step, and then it will kind of guide to the left, you know? Similar to when um, you transition from like the iPod to the iPod touch, there were still certain little like swipe features or like we start doing little different things to kind of gradually lean us to where we are now. Um, uh, so I think that that might be it. So they're conditioning um, us basically is what you're saying. They're trying to condition people. They're trying to make it easy for people to, I guess, convert non vegetarian or vegans. That's my thought on it from like a design perspective. But, so it's interesting uh, that you say that because I was reading this article, um, in science magazine that was talking about how, there has to be like there's a there's a push at the federal level to get people to stop eating so much meat because of the environmental impacts and it's exactly to the point that you're making that they have to start to shift the way people think about food and how they consume food by all these little tactics um, mm -hmm. and if they can shift a certain amount of people then they can kind of lessen the consumption of it overall or at least the perception of what food is so and and you can see that playing out you know in everything like people are really paying attention to ingredients whereas years ago you couldn't have cared less nobody cared if there was like you know um a paraben in your shampoo or nobody cared about whether that sudsy stuff was sulfates but now we uh -huh. care because we know you know so it's almost like they they put these things and then it's like when they get caught out there, then they pull it back like, oops, yeah, we were using that, my bad. So we're not gonna yeah. use that anymore, but we're gonna use some other chemical that's gonna be way worse. But you won't know that for like another 10, 15 years. But enjoy though. I mean, I don't know. I did I did just look up the, it's called some um, Maya. It's most, uh, advanced yet acceptable that's the design principle advanced yet acceptable yeah sounds about yeah. right so uh but no i mean i i don't know it i i will say though as someone who grew up eating um a lot of alternate meat alternatives i had, did always think that it was really weird when people would try to say just drop off the alternative or soy or whatever just like oh these are burgers and these were just like come on guys that's, yeah. that's, that's, come on there's no i mean now that it. you've had me surely you you can tell there's a a huge difference oh there's a huge difference um i'm actually 
was thinking about hitting up a couple of my friends this weekend so we could try uh, those uh, Beyond Meat burgers and put them on a grill because I have not had them yet. Mm. I keep meaning to have them, but I haven't. So it's really funny you brought that up. But um, I've heard it's a lot like real meat. I don't, I don't know. I have to, I have to check like, it out. But, but how? But how? It's a plant. How? This is food what I'm science, Food science is a thing, okay? We have all kinds of color changing stuff and, and all kinds of other things. I don't see why we can't allow meat alternatives to get in the game. That's all I'm saying. This is horrible. So, so I'm like, you know, I'm coming off of my European adventure. Correct. Where they have for eons taken this stuff off the table. Like they, yes. there's virtually no condition under which they could put all these preservatives and extra somethings in their food. And so again, like from a global perspective, I'm just like, what is it like? Do they hate us that much? Like, what? What is it? Like, what? What are you doing? Like, why is it not okay over there, but we're doing it here? I mean, we know part of it. It's big business to do it. Yeah. Right. Um. But still, from a just general do good perspective, it's like, oh, y'all really trying to kill us, kill us out here because you know this shit is horrible, and yeah. you're still putting it in food, like. I mean, first off, shout out to Spanish orange juice. I'm super the jealous. Sumo, though, when you sent me that that DM, I mean, I was already about that life, but then you gave me like the extra gumption to get it like right then, and listen, it was just like the heavens. All I drank up. when was I was the a black screen. hole. I saw the black hole before they they saw the black hole today. That's listen. how great it was. It is so. I wouldn't. I didn't drink when I came back. When I went. I didn't drink red, orange juice here for like six months. I was like, I refuse to taint my orange juice palate. Right. I'm gonna drink water or soda or something else. Like this, oh my goodness, anyway. Um, so shout out to that, <laughs> super jealous. I, I had a moment. Um, but you're right, everything, you know, overseas is, and, and I think also, um, I think one of the things we have to remember is that America is still an extremely young country. Yeah. Um, not as an excuse, but just the fact of the matter. I mean, so you see how um, Europe has dealt with slavery. Europe has dealt with racism. Not dealt with dealing with, but there are certain things mm -hmm. that I that you can just see. There's a difference. So, like in Europe, they. They can, they're concerned with privacy way more than Americans are um, yeah. culturally, yeah. right? We're concerned way more with freedom. So you look at the principles that built these areas. We are like, hey, we want to be free and we want to be able to rob, rape, and pillage everything. And right, we've right. kind of held on to those principles in the name, like under the flag and mm -hmm. uh, religion pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're and, and we kind of are that by and so that's why I think we still have so many things in our food. We still have many different things because someone's making more money off of it. No, um, I, I think you're onto something there. I mean, I just I was over there thinking very often as yeah. I'm walking through the city and hearing like, yeah, this castle is uh, you know 700 years old. I'm saying I'm thinking. We're such a young and angry country. Just young yes. and angry. And yeah, bitter. we're teenagers. No, we really are. Bratty yeah. teenagers. Um, because to your point, you know, especially even to around racism, it's interesting how readily people are to have those conversations. I mean, people I had never met in my life, I was on a bike tour and we're having drinks and politics. They don't even hesitate. This right. is what they do, right? You go for a yeah. coffee con leche, you have your little whatever. During siesta, we talk politics, you know, and we debate this thing. And it's so interesting that, you know, we tout this democracy thing, um, which is supposed to incite freedoms to have those conversations, yet we don't discuss it. We, we mm -hmm. don't really want to because it's uncomfortable, right? Or yeah. because we're not 
because we're the teenagers and we're not mature enough to sit down and have a conversation or a good debate without being at each other's jugular. But I was so fascinated with just how readily people were willing to have that conversation and in a, in a diplomatic manner though. Yeah. You know? No, uh, definitely. I mean, when you, when you really think about how America values cash, over everything and and um freedom over everything and you look at these other countries that kind of have already gone through all those various extremes and kind of have hit a more mid point you can go okay there's there's a little bit of hope here and there but at the same time you never know how a, a, a kid is going to turn out, you know, like right. you hit that moody phase in your teenage years and nobody's really sure where exactly you're going to land. Like you'll take school stuff from your parents, but you're going to pick up a lot of garbage along the way. So it's, that's going to be a, a interesting uh, for sure. But the other thing that I was too is like, uh, in addition to diet, um, just overall, like vacation time is so different over there compared to here. You know, like, oh, we're giving you all these months because you work so that you could live. You don't live to work. Whereas here is the complete opposite. And so when you look at what we're putting in our bodies, uh, look at how we are treating our bodies, yeah, we have these new waves and these new fads, but we're not even doing those properly because the money is attached. It's just big business. Right. So, you know, at the end of your show, you mentioned, like, <clears throat> hey, let's, you know, make sure you understand your body, make sure that you really are researching what you do. If you're going to go vegan or vegetarian, make sure you understand what supplements are there. Make sure you understand how many additional beans you need to eat each day or whatever it is that you're going to have. And um, we don't put that on the blogs, on Instagram, on YouTube, on television, because that's not what makes money. What makes money is me telling you that this one pill, this you know, bottle or this whatever is going to completely change everything and it becomes a whole weight loss thing. Everything gets tied into weight loss and vanity and some teenage stuff. And, um, huh? No, I was saying definitely for sure. Yeah, and, and, and so now we're abusing it just as bad as, I mean, I know people that are, have been vegetarian their whole lives and eat, such an unhealthy amount of um, like meat alternatives, they might as well have just been eating meat because maybe then they would be a little bit healthier, right? The amount of sodium that's in this stuff. And, you know, you're talking about double quarter pounders or stuff. I know people that will eat double meat, like double patties, multiple burgers, all kinds of, of um, the vegan cheeses and everything like that. And, and their health looks like they're eating all of that. Um, or they might tap them, you know, pat themselves on the back for not eating meat, but then their sugar game is crazy. Mm. And yeah. so I think when you when you look at transitioning, it's really important to, like you said, know your body, but also to realize that. Uh, a balanced diet is all encompassing right so it's also keeping track of your salt intake it's also keeping track of your sugar because if you're just taking meat out take meat out then that's pretty pointless definitely i mean even like diet stuff you know diet sodas half that stuff you might as well just have half of a real coke or you know half of a real mm -hmm. pepsi you know like none of it is good those because but again people don't know what they don't know right like yep. they don't first understand that your body doesn't recognize stevia versus agave it's all just sugar so you've got to watch you know what your body just takes in it's like oh sugar i've got to process it yep. and it doesn't say oh this is oh that's refined sugar versus stevia like that's just not how that works. So they think that they're being better by having these things and they over consume and then they wonder why they have these issues. I mean, so in a lot of ways, it's our stupidity and our ignorance that allows the U.S. to wheel and deal us the way they do. 
Because nobody right. looks at labels. They don't look at, they, you just have to sell them that, oh, this is a diet product or it's low fat and they'll take it, you know, oh, yeah. okay, I'll buy that. It's the same thing that I was talking about with why I stopped eating McDonald's, Wendy's and all the ones that were named with that carcinogen. People were like, for real, you're going to just stop. Yeah. Carcinogen. They're like, well, we all have to die anyhow. I'm like, okay, so here's the deal. Your body's like a slot machine and right. you're constantly, every time you eat or you drink something, that's an input. Now you can get three cherries or you can get a cherry and a seven or whatever. But when you get those three cherries, sometimes it's like bring, cancer, bring, heart disease. Like <laughs> that's how this works. And yeah. the medical community will be working for till the end of time to figure out just quite how the genetics stack, how that, that all gets illuminated, right? Like what right. are the specific inputs that go into your body that set off that, whatever that little piece of your gene trail up so that you get that disease. That's what, that's why clinical research is alive and well, right? Is because this is what they're trying to get to the bottom yeah. of, but nobody really knows and so we're just trying a whole lot of things. So it's just like, if you hear carcinogen, no, you may not exactly get cancer. You just may not. But the chances that you will or you could by eating something like that, you've now increased it. So it's like, why would you do that? You know, mm -hmm. but they, they know how to hide these things. Like I said, it, it had a very scientific name like a few years ago when the report came out shortly thereafter it became dough softener. It became all sorts of other tricky things. And you're like, oh, dough softener, of course. The bread is soft. I want my bread to be soft. Duh. Like, why not? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Carcinogens all in your system. Let's, you know. Let's not forget Coca-Cola used to actually have Coke. Yeah. So, well, it, that part. You know. We're out here. We, we, we've always been about. <laughs> it's, you, know, like, you know, and then it's like, as much as I sit here and talk and pick those kinds of things apart, it's like, once you found one thing, there's, there's another way in which they're getting you, you know? So yeah. it's like, what, pick your poison, basically. Or, uh, or, or eat air, eat oxygen. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, I, I know that there's a really big um, urban farming boom now where people are doing a lot uh a lot with hydro hydroponics, hydroponics and stuff yeah yeah like it's really interesting because you see a lot of people using like let me secretly grow weed techniques to grow not weed and it's like wow look at the science that's going on here this could have been positive all along it's crazy um and you know and that's a booming uh, industry and it's something that becomes a lot more doable for a lot of people whether or not they're in an urban environment just because it helps you to utilize a small space um, very well if you can you can hang it like I know in Nashville and surrounding areas there's like a growing urban farming community mm. and so people are able to at least make enough maybe to feed themselves or like I know um, one of my friends who works at the state was saying that the other thing they'll do is they'll use it as like their side hustle. So they'll grow organic, you know, local farmed, uh, like mushrooms and truffles, different things like that. And then they'll just sell them to, to these high end restaurants and make their money back. So it's, it's interesting to see the different innovations that are there, but it really just comes down to, I think your willingness and then um, your willingness to change your life and then also to actually go after the information to make sure that the changes make sense for you. Cause I know people that like, like you mentioned, like they just get really, really sick cause they um, go off on the deep end. Yeah. I had a friend, she gave herself a, created a lot of allergies for herself cause mm. she took a lot of extreme positions on, on her vegan diet in college. And uh, by the time we graduated or, you know, shortly thereafter, she 
was allergic to soy. She was allergic to all these different things. And maybe she was slightly before, but the way that she was living her life, it exacerbated it so badly that um, I, I want to say she ended up having at one point to eat meat to be like, to live because oh, she had wow. just gone to so many extremes, like would take her own little things to restaurants. It was like very extra. Um, the food she was eating was in balance, the vegetables and all those things. So, Yeah, uh, yeah you have to be really careful. I know when I had my kombucha incident, um, I the specialist that I had gone to, she was telling me about a guy that she had seen who was like perfectly healthy, mm -hmm. um, but he was a big like weightlifting guy and he started going to GNC and buying that creatinine You've probably seen it like oh uh, yeah yeah and she's like he was taking it for years unbeknownst to him killed his pancreas um and he now has to be on dialysis for the rest of his life like a young yeah. guy yeah so it's like be careful i think for me like i'm just thankful like i had grandparents that were just like my grandfather was big on anything that you can get get it from your food like if you have to take a supplement because the doctor tells you, then fine. But he's like, he was always like, get your nutrients, whatever, from food. And now I can see, like back then we used to be like, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, grandparents just talking. But I can yeah. see what he meant now because I see these people taking supplements. They either don't do anything for them or it creates a whole nother issue that they didn't expect. And they're Definitely. making bank. This is, you know, those are all pharmaceutical companies making bank off of everyday people. I mean, this is your GNC, this is in your supermarket shelves, like CVS, you name it. You go by, you're like, oh, melatonin. I can't sleep. Let me take that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, um, and I think also just our accessibility to that information, like, I think it helps for sure. So I'm not going to say, like, Oh, you can Google things, but um, I've noticed, and I don't know, but like as you look at people who have more money, then all of a sudden they're able to eat better and be healthier and so forth. So like Jay Z and and Beyonce, they you know big ones, right? As they got more money, then you just hire a nutritionist who goes, "Here's exactly what you need to eat," and then they go to the cook and they go, "Hey." Here's exactly what they should be eating. And because it's like, well, I can work with this. And then they put things together and it's fresh and it's new. And so now you're eating, you're looking on DJ Khaled's Snapchat. And he's eating all these amazing different things. It's like, it's all vegan. I'm vegan for 21 days, 21 day challenge. And you go, man, if I had time or money to, to go out here and grind everything by hand myself. And so I think that, um, you know, there are definitely areas of the country, like I know like Loma Linda and stuff where you can do it, but uh, we have to do a better job of prioritizing what's important in America uh, from education. I mean, from health to education, all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't think we make the right things easily accessible. Like on, I shouldn't- On purpose, on purpose. We right, can. like I shouldn't have to be like, hey, you know what? I want to eat a salad, but this dollar menu at mcdonald's has no salad on it right you know what i mean or, or well if it, I, I mean it, it's, salad, it's sprinkle nice. sugar on it that killed me when i found out like at one point mcdonald's had like sugar on their salads i was like what are y'all doing they have what on their salads i remember i remember years ago maybe it was a college or something and it's report came out and it was like there was sugar content in the mcdonald's salad stop and I was like, how? It's salad. Right. <laughs> why, why would you do that? Yeah. But, you know, so, I don't know. I just... I think, you know, I mean, it, it, to me, it's all very purposeful how it works out. It's like, if we don't educate the people in these impoverished areas, then they have to rely on these clinics, money, or they have to rely on the medical industry for pharmaceuticals and medicine, money. Um, if they come back around and they've been through that system, oh, we'll just send charities into that community to make it seem like we really care about the people. 
But those right. charities will be staples in that community for forever, never solving the problem for real, right? Like yeah. I, cause this is, and this is just something I've come to recently. Like the goal of a charity should be to fix the problem and then never exist again because the problem has been fixed. If the charity's got to live forever and ever and ever on a situation or a social issue that could be solved economically or otherwise, then you mean for that problem to be pervasive, in my opinion. Hmm. Hmm. Otherwise, you'd actually solve it. Okay. Okay. What if it can't be solved right away? What if it is going to take years? And what if and what if it seems like it's been in that community for years because but because it's like legitimately like part of a 100 year plan or something. You know what I mean? Like what if that it's supposed to take 100? I'm just being dealt with that. No, no, no. I mean and that's yeah. that's fair. I guess when I so I posted this thing on my IG stories about how what is it? The world is something like 221 trillion in debt like oh, wow. right so yeah. i don't begin to fathom what trillions of dollars are like but i can imagine right i'm a pretty smart person and so like you mean to tell me out of 221 trillion that we've clearly amassed over a period of time we can't figure out how to make sure everybody eats yep I don't know. I'm not convinced. With that money, it. we're allocating money in ways that aren't fiduciary, good ways of keeping people, citizens, alive on purpose because 221 trillion, like, everybody should be eating. Maybe not filet mignons, maybe not lobster tails. But everybody should be eating a basic, decent meal. Nah, we got human greed, so that wouldn't work anyway. Because even right. if everybody got, even if everybody got their allotment and we all came together and kumbaya it up on food, somebody's neighbor is gonna sneak at night and take somebody else's food. Facts. That's happening. Right. That's happening. So all that happens is you have that same mentality at the various levels. And some people had a head start on being in control of that. And that's just is what it is. And, um, and so it, I think it's, it's going to take a real discussion um, and understanding of, of um, humanity or hum humans understanding themselves and being real with themselves. And I think we talked about this a little bit on our data conversation. Crazy how this kind of jumps back around. And how now that data is so much more transparent, right? Mm -hmm. It's forcing people to have certain kinds of conversations and be very real about who they are at all times. Right. I think that that helps get us to the other things. Because if you don't really understand your greed, your hate, your anger, your need to rob, steal, whatever the case may be, you can't work as a community to fix it. You can't really help solve poverty and hunger and all these different things because the reason a lot of this stuff is happening is because somebody is greedy or somebody has another thing there's very few people who are hungry who would not work for food there's very few people who are sick who would not work for wellness or whatever the case is right yeah. now they may not be able to monetarily pay for what that is but it's very few people go hey i could save your life if you like work three hours a day you know what right, I mean? like right so um it comes down to like other structures and i think that that and that's why i said like what if it's like a hundred year plan or something i, I don't, I don't know but see like i i mean it, it's possible i just i think that the charities that are trying to really fix stuff fix stuff right um but i like the American Red Cross, they're well documented as not having as big of an impact as people would imagine, right? Yet every uh, okay. disaster we have, 
oh, text blah, blah, blah number for your donation. You go to the supermarket, hey, do you want to tack on another dollar for the American Red Cross? And you talk to people on the ground and they're like, yeah, no, never even got a supply, let alone a box from them. So I, I'm not, I can't say all of them because that would be a generalization, but I would right. say that the general um, intention of charities isn't exactly charitable. I, I would hang my hat on that. I don't think it's exactly uh, charitable. I think yeah. it can keep people tied to being in their situation so that these people can take in more money and feel better about themselves. I, I mean, I definitely think that many charities are businesses. And again, I think it comes down to that whole top down situation. Like at the end of the day, people running charities are people. So they've got their own situation. They still have their own mindsets. They got their own, I don't know, Xbox ones. They want to buy their kids, whatever the case may be. Um, you look at those bonuses that they get, you look at their salaries that they get, you know, even so, with, but even with so-called parameters around what you're able to take in as a non-for-profit, that's what's fascinating about it to me. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot, I, I know a lot of theories around like for-profits opening a same name or similar name non-profit so that they can reinvest the money and not have to pay the taxes. So it, it really comes down to, you know, what you're doing because now I have a for-profit, I got a not-profit, so my charitable donation goes to the non-profit that's still in work that helps me to keep my money. Uh, Mike, great example of this, Young Zuckerberg. Okay. Young Zuckerberg has his charity about getting the internet to more people. Coincidentally popped up around the time Facebook user numbers were starting to level out a little bit, but now we're bringing the internet everywhere. So his nonprofit that he can donate excess money to make sure he doesn't have to pay taxes on certain things, get a nice write off, goes towards a charity that literally is helping him get more customers and make more money. Amazing. Amazing. Ingenious. It's brilliantly horrible. It's, but, it is. But these are the types of games that these guys are playing on the big money front. And so while all charities are not that, and that's not what I'm saying, I'm saying, how can we always know? That was something that I like just randomly pieced. I was like, oh, look at this dude. I see what you're doing, my dude. Okay. We, <laughs> everyone's brilliant. not so obvious. I'm, I'm pumping my fist, but I'm also ashamed. Yeah, like it's like, man, this is, but so you don't always know who's running these organizations, what they have invested interest, you know, even when we had net neutrality, uh, that's not a nonprofit, but you had that swapping, you know, a lot of that, like, I used to be the president of said cable company that provides internet, I'm gonna go over here now and run the commission <laughs> that says that you guys should be cool. While my homeboy left the commission and took my old spot and we're both teeing up later and hitting brunch with our wives. Like, there's a lot of, of, of these different things that are going on. And, uh, yeah. So basically so. what you're saying is here on planet Earth, in the earthly yes. realm, everything Correct. is corrupt and we just shouldn't be surprised At when nobody... Time you know, accepts the fact that ethics and morality should come into play. Like that, that's just, that's, that's shit from yesteryear. Is this your position, I mean, Pablo? I don't think it was from yesteryear. To be perfectly honest with you, when you look at all the Shady McShade stuff that was going on back in yesteryear, they were just talking about it. It was just harder for us to prove that they were talking it. So ethics and morality are theories at best that we like to believe in, Makes us feel good. Makes us feel good. Makes us feel better about how we're operating in the world, but they don't actually have practical application in the real world. I wouldn't say that. Go that far. That's a little, little much. Little much. I would say, I would say that there are practical application 
the issue is that they are so relative that it depends on who you are around. Oh, isn't it? It is or it isn't, no? Like the truth, right? You're either ethical or you're not. I wish, but right. then what's fixed? You know what I mean? I mean, that would be so nice. This is, but but this is what I'm saying, though. Like, if it's, if that, if the whole intention of that sort of thing is to set the, the, the bar for what right. is right and wrong, it can't right. it can be relative to situations. And yet it is. Well, and so it but, loses its panache then, no? I, I'll agree. I mean, because the real thing is, who sets the bar? White people. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to get some customers. You're not about to stop my payment flow this evening. Everybody send your money to Pablo. He's amazing. Ooh. But he agrees, though, Ooh. low key. He just can't say listen, it. So listen, say it listen. Well, uh, here's what I'll say <laughs> uh, We're not going down this path. First off, new merch alert, Dr. CEO. Um, <laughs> Uh, also, oh, just heads up, I went to Vanderbilt University for my <laughs> master's. I'm going to love. I'm, I'm an ally. Uh, <laughs> Stop the shit. Are you serious? <laughs> you're going to say I'm an ally. I'm no. an ally. <laughs> Where have, is Sarah white, when you need her? I need the roasting. I have, I have white <laughs> friends. <laughs> okay, so do I. <laughs> And they and, and they approve my messages. <laughs> they approve not because they love me so, because the shit is true. No, no. Um, <laughs> White but no, no, everything seriously. around me. I don't know where you at, but no. But in in uh, no, but 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 in all seriousness, I mean, even in 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 that, it changes. It, at the end of the day, it it changes based on who's on the committee. And so, um, and that makes it difficult to have an all around rule, right? Because, uh, um, you know, I didn't actually take like an ethics or philosophy class, but there are so many different schools of thoughts. Oh yeah, I didn't want to get bogged down. I want to be free to do whatever I felt like doing whenever I felt like. I'm a philosopher, um. <laughs> so pardon me. I get, I get really passionate about ethics. And no, it, I, I think it's really cool. And as I've gotten older, I find myself thinking about those things more. When I was younger, I could care less. But but I, I will say it depends on the committee because, you know, you have the, the ones that do the most good for the most people. And you have the ones that do the most good for the people I care about. There's so many different um, ways that people kind of move around. And so, um, you know, you've got the socialists, you've got the capitalists, and, and there's all different things that kind of shape. And then on top of those theories, you have personal experiences. And so, I don't know. It's a, it's a fun. I think I'm just going to rock with Elon. And whenever he perfects what he's got going on over there, I'm just going to get beamed back up to where I belong. I think that's, that's where, I think that's why he's beaming humans up there too. That's the whole point. It's well, going to yeah. be. It's probably, uh, foreseeably, it's probably already happening, but you know. It's, it's going to be super corrupt. Talk about they're already they're already selling off shares of the moon and Mars right now. We can't even get there. There, here you go. Here's your plot in advance. We can't even, we can't even agree like that, that they even exist because you know there's the the um, Earth is flat camp that doesn't that believes we're getting a satellite um, <laughs> projection projections of space that don't actually exist. But hey, listen, different day, different time. Let's, let's get it, man. B.O.B. is out here educating the peoples. Indeed. I was so mad when he did that flat earth stuff. I had to stop listening to his stuff. I was a huge B.O.B. fan. I was I couldn't. I, I just, I don't, I don't understand this foolishness. And they're just so passionate about it. This is the thing. And it's like, really, though? Like, it was a meme. And it was like, could you still date somebody after they tell you they believe in uh, flat earth? Like, I was, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's you know it, it's it's on the verge of being a deal breaker because if you can believe in that, then you probably believe in some other shit that is probably not going to jive well 
at the dinner table. So we might want to part ways up front. Yeah, I just, I can't, I can't rock out with it, but you know, well. Oh, shout out to Sarah. Yeah, we didn't, I know, I was thinking the same. Shout out to Sarah. She's uh, recuperating, but she's going to be back soon. True. I got away with mad stuff today. I'm excited. Did I feel I feel like I we didn't get to roast you properly, but this was a really good conversation. It was. It was an amazing conversation. Indeed. So what's going on? What do you got going on, Pablo? Uh once again, new merch. All right. Uh Damn. box me. We'll get that going. There's Mr. Ms. Mrs. CEO. It's not just Dr. Wow. We got all the politically correct honorifics. Well, it, you know, I I was like anybody could be a CEO, it really don't matter. So, you know, True. anyway. Um, but more seriously, I'm working on well, this is actually pretty serious, but I'm working on uh that course I was telling you about weeks mm-hmm. back, um, to teach kids how to make Android apps without code. Um and be able to put them in the app store and sell them for money as well as introducing them to uh the actual software life cycle in the process so getting rid of the actual code semantics introducing them to those larger concepts helping them potentially make a little money and then uh, hopefully getting them started on on the way so i did a webinar on it a week ago or two weeks ago and I'm um, getting ready to do like a giveaway for a course. So we got, so right now, if you are interested or if you know of a classroom or school that would be interested, um, you know, contact me on Twitter at usable set guy. Um, and we can talk. Awesome. What do I have going on? So I have a new podcast out. Um, Growth on My Terms is my podcast, and it's called Healthy You, Healthy Relationships. I did it while I was in Europe and feeling wonderful, so you should definitely check that out on Anchor FM. Um, Other than that, I am getting ready to be part of the Set the Stage for Freedom, Growth, and Success Virtual Summit for the Elixir Edge in a few weeks, so. Elixir Edge, what's that? So Elixir Edge is um, a leadership and entrepreneurial coaching firm, um, mm-hmm. but they try to do it from a more, I guess, soul perspective. Um, so it's mm. kind of like, you know, you're an entrepreneur, but like, how are you looking at your business from the perspective of your purpose and why you're here and that kind of thing. So cool enough they found me on twitter and said hey we're putting together a summit would you talk to us about talent think and how you built it and you know what that's like so i'm doing that i'm one of 20 experts that uh they have on the roster uh, calm down you can't you can't throw the quotes up after you're like they found me on twitter because i'm popping like that that's like, that's I, you down. know can but you know i never Listen. really know how to people get very testy about the whole influencer expert stuff so it's my way of you know if if they found you online you're an expert dear like that's what you're doing in life it's okay it's all right you're popping right now it's all good that's happening and then i have um unleash vegas next month that should be cool. And I have HR redefined here in the city that I got invited to, and I'll be there in New York Dope. as well. So for people who want to meet me or chit chat or whatever, I am I'm out here. Or how you say it? Out here. I'm here. Out here. And then you're going to be in Nashville in July. Am I really now. though? Maybe speak that. I feel I'm like I know. Saying. I feel like I know enough people in Nashville now that I should make. I mean, I don't know. Sarah came out here. I know. Oh, true story. I got beef with Sarah low key, but we already addressed it. Never mind. I still got to share a story. It's funny. So Sarah comes out here, and we go out to eat or whatever, and we're supposed to meet back up sometime in the week, and we did not meet back up. 
I have none picture with Sarah. I noticed. And she took hella selfies starting the next day after I saw, I saw her her first night. And she took hella selfies. And then when she left, she went on this like posting rampage of all the people that she saw in Nashville. I am none. Nowhere, not even, yeah. she didn't even take a selfie of herself in the car. I was like, oh, we super yeah. failed on that one. Like, I but, was uh, wondering where the pics were at, but then I just figured maybe you guys just got into the thick of eating and catching up. Well, it was the first day. Like, so I picked her up from the airport where she had come in. And so it was like, well, that's not super paperworthy. Like, you know what I mean? We just travel mode. Right. Yeah. It was like, we try to eat and grub, tired. So it was like, you know what? We're supposed to meet up for lunch the other day or whatever. You know, we'll make it happen then. And then it just didn't, didn't go down again. <laughs> and I didn't even feel any kind of way until she went on her selfie post, look at who I found. And I was just like, word. Damn. Aww. That's Forever so alone cool. face. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man. Oh my god. Hilarious. I like, I, at least she came to visit me unlike Janine. So you know then I was I nobody out. wants me in Nashville. I'm what? literally a body who's like slide through. Let's go. You're wild. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna add it. I will add it to my hopper app so I can watch flights. All right, all right. We That's a here. start, I'm right? I'm going to add New York. I'm going to add New York. Oh, I'm going to be in Boston at the end of the month talking to the postdocs at Harvard. Oh, shoot. You know, we out here a little, little bit, little that's a little bit. That's a big flex. Stanford bit, for bit. me in the beginning of the year. Yeah, Harvard. Yeah, I, I was like, I got to catch up. Flexing. Out here. I got to move forward. I got to make some moves. Damn. Okay, Zach. I mean, I'm not too... I'm not teaching a class, but you know, we, uh, we gotta talk about my experiences as an expert. We we gonna talk we gonna talk about how you need to be adding that to the bio ASAP. Like oh now. facts. Oh like now. Facts only. Uh, and I will be recording it for some clips on my thing because I, I do want to speak a little more. Anyway, I have held you long enough. Well, this was riveting. Thank you all <laughs> for joining us. We will be back next week to talk Most about definitely. All things cannabis. So you what? Know, you might we live. Yeah, word. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>